close quote. In our zeal, let us not overlook the sage counsel from Ecclesiastes. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Actually, the prize belongs to him who endures to the end. When I reflect on the race of life, I remember another type of race, even from childhood days. My friends and I would take pocket knives in hand and from the soft wood of a willow tree fashion small toy boats with a triangular shaped cotton sail in place. We launched this crude craft in the race down the relatively turbulent waters of Utah's Provo River. <laughs> we would run along the river's bank and watch the tiny vessels, sometimes bobbing violently in the swift current, and at other times sailing serenely, serenely as the water deepened. During a particular race, we noted that one boat led all the rest. They were just tiny boats. Led all the rest toward the finish line. Suddenly, the current carried it too close to a large whirlpool, and the boat heaved to its side and capsized. It was carried, unable to make its way back into the main current. At last, it came to an uneasy rest amid the flotsam and jetsam that surrounded it, held fast by the tentacles of the grasping green moss. The toy boats of childhood had no keel for stability, no rudder to provide direction, and no source of power. Inevitably, their destination was downstream, the path of least resistance. Unlike toy boats, we have been provided divine attributes to guide our journey. We enter mortality not to float with the moving currents of life, but with the power to think, to reason, and to achieve. Our Heavenly Father did not launch us on our eternal voyage without providing the means whereby we could receive from Him guidance to ensure our safe return. I speak of prayer. I speak, too, of the whisperings from that still, small voice. And I do not overlook the Holy Scriptures, which contain the word of the Lord and the words of the prophets provided to us to help us successfully cross the finish line. At some period in our mortal mission, there appears the faltering step the wan smile, the pain of sickness, even the fading of summer, the approach of autumn, the chill of winter, and the experience we call death. Every thoughtful person has asked himself the question best phrased by Job of old, if a man die, shall he live again? try as we might to put the question out of our thoughts. It always returns. Death comes to all mankind. It comes to the aged as they walk on faltering feet. It summons as heard by those who have scarcely reached midway in life's journey. At times it hushes the laughter of little children. But what of an existence beyond death? Is death the end of all? Robert Blatchford, in his book, God and My Neighbor, attacked with vigor, accepted Christian beliefs such as God, Christ, prayer, and particularly immortality. He boldly asserted that death was the end of our existence, that no one could prove otherwise. Then a surprising thing happened. His wall of skepticism suddenly crumbled to dust. He was left exposed and undefended. Slowly, he began to feel his way back to the faith he had ridiculed and abandoned. What had caused this profound change in his outlook? 
His wife died. With a broken heart, he went to the room where lay all that was mortal of her. He looked again at the face he loved so well. Coming out, he said to a friend, it is she, and yet it is not she. Everything has changed. Something that was there before is taken away. She is not the same. What can be gone if it be not the soul? Later he wrote, death is not what some people imagine. It is only like going into another room. In that other room, we shall find the dear women and men and the sweet children we loved and lost. Close quote. My brothers and sisters, we know that death is not the end. This truth has been taught by living prophets throughout the ages. It is also found in our holy scriptures. In the Book of Mormon, we read specific and comforting words. Now concerning the state of the soul between death and the resurrection, Behold, if it may know unto me by an angel, have the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then shall it pass, come to pass, that the spirits of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow. Close quote. After the Savior was crucified, his body had lain in the tomb for three days, the Spirit again entered. The stone was rolled away, and the resurrected Redeemer walked forth, clothed with an immortal body, of flesh and bones. The answer to Job's question, if a man die, shall he live again, came when Mary and the others approached the tomb and saw two men in shining garments who spoke to them. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. As the result of Christ's victory over the grave, we shall all be resurrected. This is the redemption of the soul. Paul wrote, there are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. It is the celestial glory which we seek. It is in the presence of God we desire to dwell. It is a forever family in which we want membership. Such blessings are earned through a lifetime of striving, seeking, repenting, and finally succeeding. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where do we go after this life? No longer need these universal questions remain unanswered. From the very depths of my soul and in all humility, I testify that those things of which I've spoken are true. Our Heavenly Father rejoices for those who keep his commandments. He is concerned also for the lost child, the tardy teenager, the wayward youth, the delinquent parent. Tenderly, the master speaks to these and indeed to all. Come back, come up, come in, come home, come unto me. In one week, we will celebrate Easter. Our thoughts will turn to the Savior's life, his death, and his resurrection. As his special witness, I testify to you that he lives and that he awaits our triumphant return, that such a return will be ours, all of us. I pray humbly in his holy name. Even Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer, amen.